if you're going to live to 180, you are going to be full of metals. Metals inhibit mitochondrial function. They lower your testosterone. They cause hair loss. They cause graying, and they cause cancer, uh, as well as actually a whole bunch of other diseases. So you've got to lower your exposure to them, and you have to get rid of them as you live. Hi, I'm Kea Perowit, one of the producers of the Doctors Pharmacy podcast. Genetic variations make some people more prone to heavy metal toxicity. Some of us are very good at detoxifying, while others are not. In this mini episode, Dr. Hyman shares his personal experience with mercury poisoning in conversation with founder and CEO of Bulletproof 360, Dave Asprey. Let's listen in. There's compounds I write about called chelating agents that you can take with your food. When I eat sushi, you need the fat from fish. (laughs) I take Chlorella, which is a Just fractured chlorella. cell wall. Chlorella will bind to the mercury in the gut, so you poop it out. But chlorella will not pull mercury out of your brain. So what you end up doing is, over time, you lower the incidence of metal entering your body, and you slowly remove what's in your body. And I, I talk about how to do that in the book. But if you don't know that metals matter, and you're just going to so, so, eat the so swordfish, can you, you can you problem. measure how much metals you have in your system? And yeah, there, there's two ways in superhuman that I write about. The gold standard is you collect urine and see what your body's excreting with or without an agent that may cause you to release more. And then a more common and cheaper way, but less telling is a hair test. Mm-hmm. And there's there's usefulness for both of those, but you can go to a functional medicine doctor and say, I'd like to do a heavy metals test. And they'll usually order a urine test for you. And it's very common to find elevated mercury and lead. Yeah. In fact, if you're over 40, you're probably going to find it. Yeah. So here, let me just share the yeah. as a practicing physician who one suffered from mercury poisoning. I had it too. And two have treated literally tens of thousands of people with metal poisoning and have done tens of thousands of tests. And I would say it's probably one of the most ignored. Yeah. Um, and underappreciated causes of chronic disease that doctors don't know how to think about, well test said. or measure. And personally for me, I lived in China and it got huge exposure to mercury. I don't have great genes of detoxifying. And it destroyed every system in my body. Yes. It destroyed my gut. I had diarrhea for years and bloating and pain. It destroyed my mitochondria. I developed chronic fatigue syndrome, and it was such an extreme version that my muscle enzymes were high. My CPKs were like 600. My liver was affected. My immune system was affected. I started developing rashes and sores all over. I was completely cognitively impaired. I couldn't focus, think, concentrate, remember where I was, you know, in in train of thought. This was like, you know, 25 years ago, and I was so bad, and I literally had to become an expert in mercury and heavy metals and detoxification. And I've written a lot about it, but I think, you know, I would say that for many of my patients who suffer from weird or strange ailments, it's right at the top of my list of things to look at. And the only way to really know what your body burden is, you can look at your blood, but that only checks 90 days. I mean, if you're eating a lot of sushi, you'll see it's high, but 90 days you stop, it'll go away. You can look at your urine, but your urine also isn't gonna be high unless there's and a current exposure. So if yep. you're in a lead foundry or you're you know, eating tons of sushi, you might see a little bit of mercury. The only way to really look at your body burden is to do a challenge test where you take a pill, it's a chelator, and you collect your urine for six hours. Hair tests also check for fish methyl mercury, mm-hmm. which is where we mostly get our, our mercury from, but that, that also will go away if you haven't eaten fish for a while. And then there's another test that looks at the blood work that measures the inorganic mercury, which comes from pollution or from Correct. fillings. And that's called the Quicksilver test. And that that is surprisingly high in people who have a mouthful of fillings. And you can see the difference between fish or or, or uh, a dental mercury. Uh, and the treatments are, depending on the person, you know, can be very aggressive depending on what they need. I have a patient who's got this terrible autoimmune disease and we're giving her intravenous support. Other people can do oral support, there's medications, and, but it's, it's, a, it's a whole process that has to be done safely. And it's, I think your point is really well taken. I think it's an underserved, an underappreciated component of medicine and I hopefully one day we'll get on board with this because it's just, I mean, it was interesting. There was a, there was a um, an article in the New York Times that um, I was quoted in, it was based on these special forces. Oh yeah, those guys get led, right? <laughs> yeah, so this guy this guy came to see me whose job was, he was a you know special forces guy who was a blast expert. So oh, they wow. would you know go blow up stuff, you know, blow up doors, blow up this, 
and they had to train and practice and they had indoor practice training. Wow. And and these guys were getting all sick. And now you know the special forces guys aren't malingerers. They're not whiners. <laughs> no. They're not like, oh, I don't feel good. I don't want to work. Those aren't those guys. These are the guys who, you know, like stay in freezing ice water for an hour and swim, you know, right, like, right. and do 4,000 push ups and like, you know, yeah. don't sleep for three days. I mean, th these guys are not whiners. They're superhumans, right? Yeah. And so the guy, the guy came in. I'm like, okay, well, tell me about your job. I'm like, oh, we blow stuff up, we shoot things. I'm like, oh, okay. And so I said, let's check your heavy metals. And they were sky high. We put him through a whole program. He was, you know, metabolically his system wasn't working. He was overweight. He had prediabetes. He had cognitive dysfunction. He had all these immune issues, gut issues. All got better. And then he started sending all these special forces guys to us. And we started treating them. And they just all got better. And one of them was written about in the New York Times. Wow. Because his, you know, medical crew and everybody dismissed him. And he completely turned around. And the guy who was the lead expert at Mount Sinai, who measures bone lead, which is the most yeah. accurate way to measure lead in the body. It's not an easy available commercial test, but it's a very powerful research tool. He said, these guys had really high levels of lead. And he said on the follow-up test, he saw the levels come way down. And he says, he's never seen that in his entire experience. And this is a guy who's an expert in lead. How can you be an expert in lead and not know how to because, pour out of the body? It drives me nuts. It's not, because it's not seen as a problem. Acute poisoning, yes. Chronic poisoning, no. And there's nothing you can, quote, do about it. It's just nonsense. And there's, a, in fact, an FDA-approved drug called DMSA. It's yeah. designed for lead removal and actually removes mercury. So I think, you know, for people listening, if you have any strange or weird ailments, if you have anxiety, depression, insomnia, autoimmune disease, gut issues, fatigue, cognitive issues, it may well be heavy metals. And, uh, and you need to find a good functional medicine doctor to help you diagnose that. And you go to functionalmedicine.org or ifm.org and you can find a practitioner who may know how to do this. I, I'm gonna go a little bit broader than that. Go. If you are over 50 and you have not gone through a course of chelation, you are not doing aging right. You have to do this if you are alive in the modern world and you want to live to a highly functional old age. And the reason I say this is that the safe EPA limits for lead used to be 20 parts per million and they cut it. It was 40. It was, it was 40 it to was 20, 20 <laughs> to 10, 10 to 5. To 5. And now they're finding even down to 1, they're seeing cognitive impairment in kids. Cognitive impairment and increased risk of cardiovascular disease. And now the people who are the experts in lead are saying, quote, there is no safe limit of lead. And if you are 40 or 50, you cannot be alive and not have a lead burden in your body. Yeah. You must remove it. And it's not that hard, especially if you're not really sick. It's not going to be a big deal. And it's so strange, Dave, because medicine just ignores this. But in the journal Circulation, which is one of the <laughs> top cardiology journals, there was a paper a number of years ago that showed that if your lead level was over two, which is, quote, within the normal limits, right. which, by the way, affects almost 40% of the population has yes. this lead level, that your risk of stroke goes up 89%. Wow. The risk of a heart attack goes up 150%. The risk of death goes up from a heart attack 55%. <laughs> and this is more than smoking or cholesterol or like, and it's like, well, why doesn't your cardiologist talk to you about this? So what are the, what are the basic tips if you're not gonna get chelated? What are the basic mm -hmm. tips for detoxifying? For detoxifying, yeah. um, not just metals, or you mean metals? No, metals, like how do you, I mean, how do, or it all works for everything, but how do you? When, one of my you... favorite compounds is glutathione. And you can increase glutathione levels by increasing vitamin C, by taking N-acetylcysteine. Uh, I manufacture a glutathione pill. You can get intravenous glutathione, Lipoic which- Lipoic acid. Uh, and you do IV glutathione at your mm -hmm. clinics, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I, we do it at Upgrade Labs in LA for people to recover better. Um, alpha lipoic acid is another thing. Selenium can help. And uh, zinc. So, uh, zinc can help. The natural chelator. Uh, cilantro, but surprisingly, you want to take cilantro only after you've removed most of the metal from your body because uh, cilantro can actually move uh, heavy metals into the brain because mm. it's one of the things that can also penetrate the blood barrier. So you go through and you say, you know, I'm just going to build some of these in on a regular basis. And then you need fiber. You need oh, to poop yeah. and pee and sweat. Shocking how those work. Yeah, metals are a real deal. And learning how to detoxify, learning how to upregulate mitochondria and fix them, learning how to cool off inflammation. These are the central strategies around yeah. healthy aging. When our bodies become toxic, every one of our systems can become affected. This is just one of the reasons why it's so important to eat clean, organic, plant-based foods and grass-fed meat. 
Eat plenty of cruciferous veggies like broccoli, bok choy, kale, and Brussels sprouts to maximize your dietary phytonutrients and increase your body's ability to detoxify. Avoiding plastics and using natural, simple cleaning products in your home and on your skin are also ways you can help to reduce your toxic burden. If you suspect lead or other poisons in paints or floors, consult an expert to remove these safely. You can't eliminate toxins entirely, but you can definitely reduce exposure to these endocrine disruptors. And once you get the hang of it, you can live clean and green without much effort. Thanks for tuning in to this mini episode of The Doctor's Pharmacy. If you enjoyed this podcast, please consider sharing it with friends and family. Until next time.